In today's tutorial, I'll be showing you how to create this abstract style 3D vector cube concept using Inkscape. And at any point in this tutorial, you could look down at the bottom left hand side of my screen to see which mouse clicks and keyboard strokes I'm using. So with that being said, let's close out of that and get started. So the first thing we'll do when we open up Inkscape is go up to view, make sure you have custom selected. We're going to go to the zoom menu and we're going to zoom in at one to one. And then we'll come over here and click on this button to open up our Align and Distribute menu. Make sure you have Last Selected chosen from that drop-down menu. And then we'll open up our Edit Objects, Colors, Gradients, and Stroke menu with that button right there. So the first thing we're going to do is create a polygon. In order to do that, we'll click on our Stars and Polygons tool. And from this menu up here, make sure you have Polygons selected and not Stars. And for Corners, we want 6 and the input values for rounded and randomized should both be zero. And once you have that set, come over to the canvas, hold control on the keyboard, and click and drag to create our polygon. Now make sure you have it positioned so that the corners are going perfectly up and down like you see here on my screen. Okay, once you get there, we'll go over back to our arrow and click on that. Let's bring this to the center of the page. I'm actually gonna hold control and shift and scale this thing up a little bit. I'm gonna make this a little bigger. And then let's turn this red and come over to the opacity menu and let's drop that in half. And then we'll come up here to where it says snap to cusp nodes. We're going to click that icon to turn that on. And we're going to right click this polygon, go to duplicate. Let's turn that blue and let's grab the polygon down here at this bottom left corner. Click and drag it up to this top corner and until it snaps onto the corner there. And then we'll right click this, go to duplicate. We'll turn that green and we'll grab the polygon up by this top corner and click and drag this down to here until it snaps onto this corner. And then we'll click this red polygon and we're going to right click it and go to duplicate and then hold shift on the keyboard and click on that blue polygon so you have them both selected. And we'll go to path intersection. Then we'll click this red one, right click it, duplicate it again, hold shift, click on the green polygon go to path intersection and then hold shift and click on the blue shape so you have both the green and the blue selected and we'll right click that and go to duplicate and go to path union and then hold shift in the keyboard and click on the red polygon and let's go to path difference so once you've done this we should have three separate shapes here making up that cube and what we'll do next is we're going to take our, our rectangle tool and we're going to create a rectangle going right through the center of this green object right here. So let's just make an, a rectangle about that wide. Let's turn that black and then let's take our arrow and then hold shift and click on that green shape so we have them both selected. And let's center that up on the vertical and horizontal axis and then click off of it to deselect everything. And then we'll click on this green shape right here we're going to right click that and go to duplicate and hold control on the keyboard and click and drag this duplicated copy up to about there. We want it to be about that high and then hold shift and click on our red rectangle, our black rectangle that we just created and go to path intersection. And then we'll right click this, go to duplicate. We're going to flip that horizontally by clicking this button right here. When you hover the mouse cursor over it, it should say flip selected objects horizontally. You can click that and then hold shift in the keyboard and click on this red shape and let's center that up on the vertical axis and then click off of it to deselect everything. Now let's click on just this black shape right here and hold control and let's drag this down to about here, right about there. And then we'll hold shift and click on the red shape and let's go to path difference. And then we can click this first black shape and then hold shift and click on the green shape and go to path difference. So we should end up about here once you do that. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to click on this uh, this red sh uh, this blue shape up top. We'll right click that. We'll go to duplicate. Um, let's turn that red and then we'll right click this. We'll duplicate it again and we'll turn that green and let's grab this green shape right by the right corner over here and snap it onto the corner of this green shape right there. And then hold shift in the keyboard and click on the red shape behind it. 
and go to path difference and then we'll right click this go to duplicate and grab the shape down by this bottom corner right here and snap it onto this corner over here and then the next thing we'll do let's take this blue shape right here let's click on that and let's snap the right corner of that into this corner right here we want to take the right corner of this shape right here and we want to snap it into this bottom corner right here and then we'll go to our bezier pen let's click on that and we're going to draw a shape right in here we're going to, we're going to start out up here at this corner snap the cursor onto that corner click and then bring the cursor down to this corner right here click and then bring it over to this corner click up to this one click and then attach it to the starting point and click and let's turn that black and let's take the opacity of that and bring that down in half and let's go to stroke paint and let's click the X button to turn the stroke off and then we can go back to the fill tab and then let's go back to our arrow up here and right here the very far left is just it should be a button that says lower selection to the bottom we're gonna click on that and lower that to the bottom and then we're gonna go back to our bezier pen and we're gonna start out right right in the center of this leg right here right down here below this blue shape sort of in the center of that leg we're gonna click hold control bring that line straight all the way up through it and click again and let's bring this line all the way around to the starting point connect it all together and then we'll go back to our arrow and hold shift on the keyboard and click on that blue shape and let's go to path intersection and then let's lower that to the bottom it should it should already be towards the bottom but we'll just do that just to be safe now the next thing we're going to do is let's click on this first red object right here and let's right click this and go to duplicate and let's go to our bezier pen and let's snap the cursor onto this corner right here and once it snaps click it and then hold control and bring the line straight up through the rest of the graphic and then click and let's bring the line all the way around the outside here and come up the middle and connect the line to the starting point and then we can go back to our arrow and hold shift on the keyboard and click on the original blue shape or red shape rather and we can go to path intersection and let's just turn that green so we could differentiate it from the rest of the graphic and then we could flip that horizontally by clicking this button right here flip selected objects horizontally or alternatively you could just press H on the keyboard and then we'll grab this green object right here down by this corner and we'll snap it onto this bottom corner right here and let's send that to the bottom by lowering selection to the bottom let's drop that to the bottom and then I think we could turn off the snap the cusp nodes for now we should be done with that and let's click and drag over this entire thing and let's bring the opacity on that all the way up and then we can click off of it to deselect everything so as you see here we should have at this point we pretty much have our skeleton of what we're going to make we're gonna color it in now what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna create a color palette to color this in we're gonna come over to the um, the create circles and ellipses tool let's click on that hold control on the keyboard and click and drag up here to create a circle I'm just using this to create a color palette we'll go back to the arrow and I'm gonna use this shade of yellow of, over here as a base I'm gonna click that turn that yellow I'm gonna right click that go to duplicate bring this over here right click that go to duplicate and then bring that over here now I'm gonna click on this middle circle right here and I'm gonna come over to the fill tab and under the HSL tab I'm gonna make this I'm gonna come up to the H column I'm gonna make this slightly different shade I'm gonna make that orange kinda of like that and then I'll take this yellow one I'm gonna do the same thing but I'm gonna go a little further to the left to give it a red shade like that and then what I'll do is let's click on this first red one right here and let's go to our dropper tool if you're using a laptop this icon won't appear on your screen you'll have a little arrow down here what you can do is click that arrow and a little list menu will pop up and this should be the dropper or you could just press F7 on the keyboard I'm gonna press F7 because it's a shortcut you press F7 and there we have our dropper and let's make that piece of this color right here just click in the circle and make it that color and then we could press F1 to go back to the arrow or you can just come over here and click on the arrow I'm gonna use keyboard shortcuts for the rest of this so I'm gonna press F1 to get back to the arrow I'm gonna click on this green piece right here I'm gonna press F7 to get the dropper and click on this middle shade right here I'm gonna give it that shade I'm gonna press F1 to go back to the arrow 
and let's click on this green leg right here. Press F7 to go back to the dropper. Let's give this that middle shade, that mid shade of uh, orange. Then you can press F1 to get back to the dropper, uh, to the arrow rather. I'm going to click this red leg, and then I'm going to hold Shift and click this other red leg. And then I'm, with them both selected, I'll press F7 on the keyboard to get the dropper, and I'm going to give it the very the, the light shade of yellow. And then press F1 to get back to the arrow. Let's click on this black piece back here in the background. Press F7 to get back to the dropper. Click on this orange, uh, this reddish shade right there, just like that. And then we'll go back to F1 to the arrow. And finally, we'll click on this blue piece right here. Press F7 on the keyboard to get back to the dropper. And I'm going to give it the light shade of yellow, just like that. And then we could press F1 to go back to our arrow. So as you see right here, we have this thing colored in, and it looks pretty good, but I'm going to shade this thing in with gradients to make it pop a little more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our base colors right here. I'm going to give them gradients. I'm going to click on this first one right here. And I'm going to come over here to where it says linear gradient. I'm going to click on that button to give it a linear gradient. And if you're using Inkscape version 91, there should be an edit icon right down here. If you're using 47 like me, you could just follow what I'm doing. I'm going to click the edit button. And when you click the edit button on version 91, this menu and this, this menu right here should pop up somewhere in the top toolbar. You could do what I'm doing, it's just going to be positioned differently. So once we get our gradient editor, I'm going to click the drop down. I'm going to go down to the second shade. I'm going to go to the A column. I'm going to bring that all the way to the right. And then I'm going to go to the L column and bring that all the way to the right to make that white. And close out of that. And then I'll click this one right here, our mid shade. I'll give that a linear gradient as well. Go back to our edit. Let's edit that gradient. Uh, let's go to our drop down. Let's go to the second, the second item in the drop down. Go to the A column. Bring that all the way to the right. And I'm going to make this a lighter shade of yellow up here with the H. Um, maybe about that much. And then we can close out of that. And then finally, let's click on this one right here, this reddish uh, shade. Give that a linear gradient as well. Go to the drop down. Uh, actually, no, we're going to edit that. We're going to click edit. And then go to this drop down, click on that. Uh, bring the A column all the way to the right. And then come back up here. And let's make this a little lighter, almost orange, kind of like that. And then we can close out of that. We're done with that. So the first thing we'll do, let's start with this piece right here, this reddish piece. Let's click on that and let's go to the gradient. Let's give that a linear gradient and let's go to our drop down and pick the darker shade. And then you could press G on the keyboard to bring up the gradient tool. Or you could just come over here on the side of the screen to press the gradient tool. But again, if you're using a laptop, this tool won't be here. You'll have to click on the arrow and get it from the list. I just like to use the keyboard shortcuts. I just press G on the keyboard and I get the tool. So I'm going to take this darker shade, the left side. I'm going to take that node and bring it towards the bottom over here. Then I'm going to take this circle, the, 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 uh, the lighter shade, and bring that node up this way. And once I get it up here, I'm going to hold control so it goes straight up and down. I'm going to bring this up to about here. And then I'll click on this piece right here that was the same shade. I'll give that the same gradient. Let's go to the linear gradient tool. Go to our drop down, pick our darker shade. Take, this, take the darker end of the... Uh, the gradient right here, put it towards the bottom, grab the lighter end, hold control and bring it straight up. And then let's click on this piece in the front right here. Let's give that a linear gradient and let's go to the drop down and let's pick the mid shade right there, that one right in the middle. Bring the darker shade to the bottom right there. Take the lighter shade, bring it up to the top, hold control, bring it all the way up. And then I'm going to give that I'm going to give this piece, this little leg right here, I'm going to give that that same gradient. Click on that. Go to the linear gradient. Go to the drop down. Select the mid shade right there. Take the darker shade. Bring it down to the bottom. Take this one. Hold control up to the top. And then I'm going to take this one up top here, this little arm up top here. I'll give that a linear gradient. I'll go to the drop down and pick the light one all the way in the bottom. I'll bring the darker shade to the back right here. And then I'll take the lighter shade. And I'm going to hold control so it goes parallel with the shape. As you can see, this line is running parallel with the shape of the object. And I'm going to do the same thing right here. I'm going to give that the same shade. Let's go to a linear gradient. Go to the drop down, the same shade. 
put the darker end to the back, hold control on the keyboard and bring this one so the line is running parallel with the shape. And then finally, we could take this piece down here and we can give that the same shade we just gave that piece. So let's go to the linear gradient, go to the drop down, the very last shade down there, put the white, the, the, uh, the lighter shade towards the front, take this darker shade, hold control so the line runs parallel with this line right here. And we can leave that right there. I'm actually gonna bring this out a little bit. I don't want that all the way white. Maybe like that's pretty good. And once you've done that, we can go back to our arrow and click and drag over the whole thing, group it together, and you can resize it however you'd like. We are now finished. So that is how you can create that concept using Inkscape. And if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thank you for watching.